Hi everybody, I want to talk about how to be emotional and I think this is something that at first glance you're thinking well I don't need any help in this department, right? Uh, and this is not to say that this is the one and only way to be emotional and that all other methods are right or wrong. No, no, no. This is just a good a good way to be emotional that, that I've learned over the years. Uh, and, and, and it's this. First of all, you have to understand when you act emotionally, what is going on beneath the surface here? When you're acting emotionally, being upset, being dramatic, being angry, frustrated, venting, acting out, all that stuff, uh, it comes down to one thing. You are being reactionary, and that comes down to one thing. That is the amygdala in your brain, and that directly comes from your flight or fight response right so if you can't run away then you want to fight this be, this directly also comes from what, what this means is that you have perceived a threat some sort of threat to yourself your your, your well-being your chihuahua whatever and so you something hurts you emotionally um, or something has wronged you etc and so now now you you've gone into reactionary mode you are reacting to something that has happened to you okay now why is this bad how can this be bad so it's not necessarily a bad thing but it just might not be the best thing um and i look at it like this and, and this is something you need to to recognize when you react to something when your fight or flight response kicks in that means that if you have perceived a threat then that means that there may very well be something superior to your own being uh in your vicinity and that can rain down potential harm and destruction on you what that implies then is that you are inferior or insecure and so when you react and respond in a dramatic acting out kind of fashion that is directly communicating to everybody else that you're not in control and that you are inferior and that something else has threatened you and there's something superior in your immediate surroundings this is one reason why people like narcissists uh, thrive on conflict because they feel like if they're if they are the ones being perceived as a threat, then they must be superior and everyone else must be inferior, okay? So understand, when people try to get under your skin, when you're dealing with a conflict seeker and conflict creator, that is directly what they are going for. They are going for that feeling of superiority over others because when people get upset and knocked out of their emotional frame, then they must be superior because that means somebody else is perceiving themselves as inferior, okay? So, what do you do about this? Well, I want to say it's easy, but uh, you know, I, I always tell people, you have the right to remain silent, but having the ability is something else entirely. So just because you have the right to remain silent doesn't mean you'll be able to, right? But that's the general direction you want to point your compass, right? So what is the opposite of that? You don't want your flight or fight response getting activated. You don't want to go into trigger mode. Triggers are never good, right? Triggering means you're automatically inferior in a, in a certain area or a certain subject. And you may not be, but that's going to be the message that you broadcast to the people in your surroundings. When you get triggered, you are automatically broadcasting, hey, I may very well be inferior in this specific category or instance or phenomenon or whatever, blah, blah. So remain calm and quiet, right? Because from the opposite standpoint, when somebody is, is coming at you and trying to start a conflict, at that point, that means you are superior because they have registered you as a threat. So you've already won when people start trying to pick at you and, and start a conflict. You're already in the superior position. You've been trained and tricked into surrendering that position of superiority and giving it up in the name of being inferior, right? So you have to change your programming on that. You have to understand when people are coming up trying to start problems with you, there that comes from a place of insecurity and that insecurity comes from the perception of being inferior, right? So, uh, you know, inferiority, it, and insecurity go hand in hand there. So 
how to be emotional, okay? These phrases are ones that I use all the time and they help. So it's very simple. Remain calm and you say things like, because I don't feel like it or because I feel like it, right? So you can say, because I feel like it or because I don't feel like it. You can say things like, because I want to or because I don't want to. Because you don't owe anybody an explanation to begin with. So the fact that you're even saying anything at all is already a gift that you're giving them. But more importantly, when you say things like, because I don't want to or because I want to, you're not having to provide rational explanations. You're providing an emotional explanation. And the, the power in that, there's real, real power in that because emotions and feelings cannot be right or wrong. They are irrational. So when people tell you, well, you shouldn't feel that way, right? Okay, great. Thanks for telling me how I should or should not feel, right? Uh, emotions are irrational. And people who thrive on conflict are looking for you to give them a rational explanation or something rational to work with because rational statements are the ones that can perpetuate the cycle because they can always offer rebuttals or they can say that you are wrong about something, right? So you want to avoid that altogether. So it's perfectly fine to always just tell people because I want to, because I don't want to, right? You, you just say that. I don't feel like it. Or say, I want to go do blah, blah, blah. Why? Why would you ever want to do that? Because I want to, right? It's really, really hard for somebody to offer a rebuttal to that and to manipulate somebody else on that if all you ever say is, that's just what I want, man. I mean, how do you not understand that? You can always put it back on. Look, I told you that's what I want. Why are you still talking? Right? So you don't offer anything else past that. And you say, because I don't want to. What I don't understand is how you're confused about that. Because see what they're doing, they're, and you'll notice this, they're trying to milk a rational response out of you. Right? Because they know that they can't work with something like, because I feel like it, or because I want to. They can't work with that. That doesn't give them anything. Right? So I was like, well, you should, I don't understand why you would want to do that. Sorry about your luck. You don't offer any more and say, well, that's, I mean, that's my answer. You know, run with it. Do what you will. I just, I know what I want. That's what I want. So that's what I'm doing. See what I mean? Say, this is what I want. So that's why I'm doing it. It's pretty simple. And if they can't understand that, say, how do you not, I don't, you, they, they're going to try and, and trip you up. I don't understand why anybody would ever want that. Well, I don't know. Maybe read a book. Uh, read a book? It's like, look, man, I told you, that's what I want. That's why I'm doing it. If there's an, now, if there's nothing else, have a good day. Bye-bye. Right? When you're out and about and somebody comes up trying to start shit with you, start a fight, you know, starting drama. Somebody comes up and tries to trigger you purposefully or unpurposefully. Just recognize that at that point you've won and you really don't have to do anything. And I know that seems so backwards because we're so used to, you know, somebody's always picking on me. Somebody's always messing with me. Somebody's always pointing out my flaws. It's like, well, there's a reason for that. It's because they feel inferior to you, right? So people want to, you know, use double talk or provide backhanded compliments, etc. Like, oh, those pants don't make you look all that fat. You just say, thanks. And just leave it at that. Just because somebody wants to be an asshole, you should just let them be an asshole. Let them look like the asshole. Because as long as you're allowing them to look like the asshole, you don't look like one. And there's no reason for you to get pulled into it. Never argue with an idiot because they will drag you down to their level and then they will beat you with their experience. So just don't do it. And the other one is never wrestle with a pig because pigs love to wrestle in their own shit, right? So never wrestle with a pig. They love to be in their own shit. So what do you do? Spray them off with the hose. Oh, they hate that. So 
Never ever get involved with somebody that's trying to start a conflict. Don't let them trigger you. If you find yourself being triggered, recognize that, that you've won because it, it, you'll find this in so many different uh, uh, literatures. The ad hominem attack is usually the last Hail Mary volley in an attempt to win superiority in any situation, right? So it's the last resort measure for, for a, a victory or some kind of perceived victory socially or otherwise, right? So when somebody's personally attacking you, that means that they've run out of ammo, right? I did a video called Stacking Ammo a while back. When they run out of ammo, then they just start hurling insults. And that means you've won. So you can just relax, enjoy your wine, and uh, call it a day. You don't have to respond to that. They just be like, ah, real cool. <laughs> or or the, one of my favorite responses when somebody... Uh, uh, Somebody wants to attack me and say something like, you know, you're just an asshole, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, you're right. I know. <laughs> right? It's also really, really hard to insult someone when you agree with them, right? So that's pretty much how you take the piss out of their ad hominem attack. You know, you're just a controlling asshole, blah, blah, blah. And be like, I know it. I know. I know. You're right. You're right. I am. I am. Or you say something like the... the you say you're right. I am, and you repeat whatever it is that, that they're that they're saying. Right? Like okay. you're right. These pants do make my butt look fat. I'm still wearing them, so <laughs> I'm aware. You say something like, "I know. I, I am an asshole. I'm I'm aware of that. Right? I'm a total asshole right now." Especially when you say when you use that that tone of voice, like you just could give a shit. Like that just takes the piss straight out of them. Like, yeah, you're right. I am. I'm totally a controlling asshole, you're right. Um, now, if there's anything else, if you don't mind, I've got real shit to worry about. See what I mean? So, that's how you... That's a good way to be emotional. Uh, without it... Uh, without it being uh, maladaptive. Without it uh, perpetuating any cycles of conflict or abuse. You know, right? Just, Throw, throw them throw them an empty bone so, you know, here's, yeah sure here have a bone and just don't ever give it to them right uh, it's fun especially try, try it out next time somebody's messing with you just agree with everything they say quietly like yeah you're right you're right yeah you know what I am an emotional bitch you're, you're 100% correct on that I'm way out of line I'm totally out of line yeah I'm an idiot sure yeah yeah I'm, I'm stupid. I'm, I'm worthless. Yeah. Yep. Totally worthless. And I'm totally out of control. And I'm totally triggered right now. I'm absolutely triggered. Completely triggered. So, you're right. You're right. I'm wrong. Now, if you'll excuse me, I, I need to go clip my toenails. Right? So, that's, that's, that's a good way to do it. Please like, comment, or share. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all on the next video.